We've been working with uh, cognitive scientists, uh, Professor Mike Moser from Colorado Boulder, and about the, this experiment about uh, sequential effects of uh, certain sequences of cues on subject uh, human performance. And in the laboratory, they've been testing uh, relatively simple tasks like button pushing or reaching. And what we wanted to do in this particular experiment is figure out how sequences of cues affect drivers and how they affect driving. Psychologists for the last 40, 50 years have looked at a phenomenon called sequential dependencies, where they ask people to do very simple tasks. They show you a stimulus, an X or a Y, let's say, and you have to push one of two buttons, one if it's an X, one if it's Y. And you see that the reaction time, the time it takes for people to push the button, is strongly dependent on the recent sequence of stimuli and responses they've seen and made. And it's been this kind of sort of fun laboratory curiosity and it's fun from my perspective to build computer models of the brain that try to explain what's going on inside the head that produces these effects. But we had no idea that these effects would transfer to situations in the real world. It's very common that people when they are trying to accelerate versus brake uh, in a m very uh, monotonous manner uh, it turns out that sometimes they may think that they are doing braking, but they may end up doing acceleration. And it turns out that that is precisely why sequential effects are important. Because what is happening there is that even though at the higher level of cognition you are thinking about using one particular maneuver, but because your body has developed this kind of a preference for doing something repetitively, it does that before realizing that it made an error. What we wanted to do in this particular experiment is figure out how sequences of cues affect drivers and how they affect driving. So taking those simple laboratory experiments and moving them up a step into maybe a simulator environment where we can still control a lot of the variables, but at least in this case, an experiment that has, may have real effects in, the, in society, especially in safety. What we're measuring here is the uh, effect of sequences of red and green cues on uh, drivers' ability to brake and accelerate, in particular their response time to braking. We look at how their response latency, the time to push the gas or push the brake, depends on the sequence of uh, lights that they've seen in the recent past. So if they've just braked twice and then they have to brake again, they'll be a little faster to respond. So you're in stop and go traffic and you've just had to brake a few times, you're primed, you're ready to brake again. On the other hand, if you've just accelerated to get around a bunch of obstacles, then you have to brake. Uh, it turns out you're slower because you have to switch to a different sort of action. So we're looking at how the recent sequence of actions you've performed influences the time to react in a particular situation. But these kinds of effects, if we can actually measure them, measure them uh, in a controlled laboratory environment, uh, we're able to really deduce what is the cause of the delayed response times and how can we really mitigate them. So we have two experiments that are both about three quarters done. We've run about 20 participants in each experiment. Usually in these sort of psychology studies to get statistically reliable effects, you have to run 40 or 50 subjects. So we're still ongoing with the the experiments, but the results are very clear that there's about a hundred milliseconds difference in your response time depending on the sort of history of ex experience that you've had in the recent past. A hundred milliseconds isn't much in terms of ticks of a clock, but if you're traveling in a car that's going 65 miles an hour, uh, the, the difference is about 10 feet in stopping distance and uh, delaying your stop by 10 feet is the difference potentially between you know, safely braking and, and hitting the car in front of you. Even just that short amount of time can mean the difference between a fatal crash and a severe crash, or the difference between a severe crash and a minor crash. Indeed, in driving case also, there is this uh, sequential effect uh, which exists. Uh, so hopefully, that kind of a finding, which is basically a fundamental scientific finding, uh, might help us in designing our uh, accelerators and uh, brakes uh, so that they can counter the, this effect of sequential uh, thing based upon what it sees should be the right response and uh, accidents due to this pedal misplacement uh, would be avoided. 
And so these kinds of effects are very important to measure if we actually have these effects. And what we have seen in recent experiments is that we have seen significant sequential effects in the response time of drivers.